welcome to another session. We are going to look at uh, what we refer to as robot specification. Specification. So what are the specifications that uh, a robot uh, should have? So we are going to look at the specifications. Uh, and we are going to talk about uh, nine specifications. Maybe we can write, we can have them on the board. Then we can uh, discuss one by one. So the first specification that we are going to talk about is the work envelope. Work envelope. We can also talk about what we refer to as the load carrying capacity. Load carrying capacity. We can talk of the load carrying capacity. Another uh, specification that uh, we can talk about is the speed of movement. Speed of movement. The fourth specification that uh, we can talk about is repeatability. 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 The fifth uh, specification that we can talk about is the control resolution. Control resolution. Control resolution. Number six, we can talk about another specification, and that is uh, what we call spatial resolution. Spatial resolution. The next one, we can talk about mechanical errors. Mechanical errors. And also, we can talk about the next one, which is the accuracy. So this is number five, six. So the one should be number seven, number eight. And we've said that uh, number eight is uh, accuracy. And finally, we can talk about number nine, which is stability. Stability. So those ones are some of the robot specifications that uh, we are going to talk about. So we, we can start by looking at uh, what we refer to as the work envelope, and at times it is referred to as the work volume of a manipulator. So this one can at times be referred to as the work volume of a manipulator. And when you talk about uh, uh, the work envelope of uh, uh, as a specification, uh, as a robot specification, then we are simply uh, talking about uh, uh, it is just a defined, uh, it is a defined space. It is just a defined space within which the robot is in a position to manipulate. It's a defined space in which the robot is in a position to manipulate the, the end of the wrist. So in other words, we are simply saying that the work envelope is just that environment within which the robot is able to work. So it is the space that the, 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 the robot is able to work. And this one is always uh, dependent on a number of uh, on a number of types of joints, or on a number of types of joints. Also, we can also talk about the physical size of the joints, and links, and the range of the various joints. Since uh, usually have the arm movement in different configurations, and they are always different. And therefore, when we talk about the work volume or the work envelope of different coordinate systems must also be different. And this one is dependent on uh, the factors uh, that we have mentioned before. That is the physical size, the size of the joints, as well as the range of uh, the various joints. And this one is simply how the, 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 the area within which the robot is able to accomplish its task, the area given for the robot to accomplish its task. The other uh, 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 specification that we are going to talk about is uh, what we refer to as the load carrying capacity. The load carrying capacity. So when you talk about the load carrying capacity of uh, uh, the object or the load carrying capacity, then we are simply talking about uh, the weight. We are simply talking about the physical size or, and construction of the robot, and also we are talking about its capacity to transmit force and torque to the end effector in the wrist. So we are simply here talking about uh, uh, the physical size 
of construction of the robot, and also we are talking about its capability to transmit force and talk to the end effector in the wrist. In most cases, you'll find that uh, the capacity, uh, there, there is always capacity for light models, and this one can be even uh, as small as 1.5 kg, and that one is always uh, including the weight of the end effector. And some heavy ones can be even as big as uh, uh, several tons, we can talk of a ton, and this one is now what the load carrying capacity is all about as far as the specification is concerned. The other specification that we can talk about is the speed of movement. The speed of movement. And this is simply the speed at which the robot is capable of manipulating its end effector. Uh, and this particular speed is always governed by several factors. One of them is the distance to be moved. The other one can be the weight of the part to be moved. Uh, we can also talk about the accuracy that is required in placement of the part in position. You'll find that uh, the heavier parts and higher placement accuracy usually demand slower movement, while lighter parts can be uh, moved at faster speeds. And also, you will also find that the speed usually vary from one point to another. So in that case, we are simply talking about how, what, when we talk of the speed, we are simply talking about uh, what, what is the speed by which uh, the robot is capable of manipulating its end effector. So we can look at uh, the next one, which is the repeatability. Uh, repeatability. So we can talk about another uh, specification of the robot, uh, that is uh, repeatability. And repeatability is simply the measure uh, of the robot's ability to position an object at a previously taught point in the work envelope. So how when a certain uh, instruction is given for the robot to place a given object at a specific point in the work envelope. Its ability to do it several times and doing it accurately is what we refer to as repeatability. And uh, this one uh, is always, uh, 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 the repeatability can always be limited because there is always uh, inherent errors that may be present. Uh, particularly, this one can be due to mechanical sources. Uh, uh, the robot may not be able to return to the exact programmed uh, point due to maybe mechanical sources or mechanical errors that may be available. So we can talk about uh, uh, the next, which is now control resolution. Control resolution. So when you talk about the control resolution here, then the control resolution relates to the system's capability. That is both the controller, uh, it relates to both the controller and the positioning device. In order to divide, uh, it, the, in order to divide the range of the total movement into closely spaced points that can be identified. So it is just, uh, it is actually relating to the capability uh, of, you can talk of either controller or the positioning device uh, to divide the range of the total movement into a closely spaced point that can be identified. And when you talk about these points, it will be, this one will, present, uh, will represent the minimum noticeable movement achievable. So we can talk about an arm. What is the minimum movement of a particular, of a particular, we can talk of, no, not necessarily arm, but uh, the end effector. What is the minimum uh, movement that the end effector is going, it can, can make in a given, in, 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 can make what that small distance, that is what we refer to as the control uh, resolution. So that it would be the minimum noticeable movement achievable, and it may be, Added to, to, it may be added that uh, uh, the controller will always generate pulses. So the controller will generate pulses. And after generating these pulses, uh, they will be, there will be very small duration. But positioning the device should be able, uh, posi positioning device should be able to respond and change its position accordingly in such case. So we can look at 
uh, let's look at maybe how the controls uh, uh, control uh, resolution can be obtained so we can talk about control resolution so when you talk about control resolution control resolution so the control resolution is always given uh, as the range of movement range of movement it's always given as the range of movement uh, divided by 2 raised to power n range of movement divided by 2 raised to power n where uh, we can talk about n is the number of bits devoted to a joint so n is the number of bits uh, number of bits devoted to a joint number of bits devoted to a joint it's the number of bits that is devoted to a joint and we can talk about the other one is 2 raised to power n which is the number of addressable points 2 raised to power n is the number of addressable points it's the number of addressable points so that is what uh, will give you the control uh, resolution the other uh, specification number six i think we are in number six the other specification that uh, we can talk about is uh, what we call spatial resolution whereas we were talking about uh, the when we were talking about the control resolution so we have spatial resolution so when we talk about uh, uh, the control resolution we were simply talking about the movement of one part so whereas the control resolution uh, concerns the resolution for only one link and one motion, the spatial resolution uh, combines the control resolution of all the motions and also considers the mechanical errors in the uh, the mechanical errors that will be in the points and the associated links. So the spatial, uh, when, when you talk of the spatial resolution, then the spatial resol resolutions usually vary, and the, this one is dependent on the exact location of the wrist end, uh, because certain joint combinations would tend to magnify the effects of control resolution and the mechanical errors. So as maybe as we talked about uh, the control resolution, the difference between the control resolution and the spatial resolution is that whereas the control resolution we are simply talking about the movement of one link now this one is the summation of the movement of all the links of the robot and it is also taking care of the mechanical errors so number seven uh, the other specification that we can talk about is the mechanical errors mechanical errors mechanical errors that is number seven and the mechanical errors usually arise from what we can talk about as the backlash in the gears we can also have the hysteresis uh, deflection of links hydraulic leaks and so on and these areas the, the errors that we are talking about are always normal are, are always uh, uh, characterized by a normal distribution the, num the next specification that we can talk about in this case is the accuracy. Uh, we can talk about accuracy. Accuracy. We can talk about accuracy. And when you talk about the accuracy here, then we are simply talking about the measure uh, of uh, the ability of the robot to position the wrist end at the desired location in the work envelope how uh, that that ability of the robot to actually uh, measure uh, the, the, the actually position the end of the wrist at the desired location is what now we refer to as the uh, accuracy uh, of uh, the robot the other specification that uh, we can talk about is uh, what we refer to as stability and the stability is just uh, it, it, the stability simply relates uh, to the amount of overshoot and oscillations in the robot motion as it is about to reach a certain location so you'll find that uh, a stable system uh, we usually has less os oscillations or, and, and it becomes inherently slower in response so that is what uh, we can talk about as far as uh, the robot specification is concerned 
Maybe we can also look at uh, some of uh, uh, what we can talk about. How can we obtain accuracy? Uh, maybe we can talk a look at how are we going to obtain the accuracy. So we can look at how to obtain the accuracy. So accuracy, accuracy uh, will be given by uh, the control resolution divided by two will be given by control resolution divided by two plus that one we add what we call the three sigma plus three sigma. So this one should be adding plus three sigma plus three sigma and in this case when we talk of uh, we maybe we, might, we may need to define uh, what all these are where where the sigma that we are talking about here is the standard deviation of mechanical error this is the standard deviation of mechanical error It's the standard deviation uh, for the mechanical error. And we can talk about repeatability. When you talk about that, repeatability is given as, uh, the repeatability will be given as plus or minus three that, which is basically uh, six sigma goes of plus or minus. It is like multiplying by two. And then spatial resolution, spatial resolution spatial resolution, uh, for the spatial resolution, it will be given by the control resolution plus six sigma. It will be given by the control resolution. We can have it here. It will be given by control resolution plus six sigma. Then we can also talk about uh, the accuracy in terms of spatial resolution. So we can talk about accuracy in terms of spatial resolution and this one will be given by so that one will be given by spatial resolution divided by two that one will be given by spatial resolution you divide by two so those ones are some of the formulas that are very very important in order to come up with uh, this. Maybe we can look at a small example, uh, one example, so that uh, we can uh, see uh, what maybe how to calculate uh, uh, maybe some of these parameters that we've talked about. So we can have the example uh, K. Uh, the example says one of the links of a robot, 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 has a telescoping arm, has a tele, so we can talk of an example one, a telescoping arm, has a telescoping arm, with a stroke of 768, with a stroke of 768 millimeters with a stroke of 768 millimeters full stop the control memory the control memory the control memory of the robot has 8 bit storage of the robot has 8 bit storage has 8 bit storage has 8 bit storage capacity for the axis 8 bit storage capacity for the axis 8 bit storage capacity for the axis full stop determine the control resolution determine determine the control resolution for the same, determine the control resolution for the same. So in this case, so maybe that is uh, what you supposed to look at. So we can look at, maybe we can talk about the solution. So, so can get the solution very fast. So the solution here, in this case, we know what the control uh, resolution is. So we can look at what we have been given. So we have been given the stroke length. 
the stroke length the stroke length uh, we have been given and the stroke length is also the range of movement eh? so the stroke length is also the range of movement and this one we have been given to be 768 millimeters and 768 millimeters uh, the next one uh, we have been given the bit storage capacity for the axis so bit storage capacity for the axis the bit storage capacity for the axis and that is uh, what we call n is equals to 8 so in this case when you talk about that then now we can talk about the control resolution now now control resolution will be given by the control resolution will be given by the stroke length all over 2 raised to power n so stroke length all over 2 raised to power n all over 2 raised to power n so and this one is the same as 768 millimeters divided by 2 raised to power 8 which if you do it uh, then you will get that uh, it is going to be 3 millimeters so that is going to be 3 millimeters which is now what we refer to as the control resolution that is the control resolution So, uh, if you want to, maybe, maybe, maybe for further examples, you can uh, uh, check further examples and the material, other materials that will enable you to understand this further. Uh, uh, you can check into www.triplees.education and you will get the materials as well as other examples that uh, have been made available there. Uh, so that one uh, marks the end of what we talk about the robots classification. So the next thing that I will be talking about will be a robot programming.